All right, podcast. Well, the first issue here is that I'm wedged between two cars parked on the street, very tight. So I've got to execute some maneuvers. And hopefully not cause damage. Because the last thing I want to do is cause stress. That's the last thing I want to have happen. Wouldn't want stress. Okay. Ah, oh, made it. God. People, leave some space. So, um, cut down on carbs yesterday, and then I was told to try intermittent fasting, where I don't eat for 16 hours. And so I I did that. I ate yesterday at, uh, last thing I ate was around 3 or 4, and then I didn't eat dinner, and then I uh, am up this morning, and I do feel a, a bit better. Less bloated. There you go. So that's fun. And I also, I'm beginning to think that the purpose of this podcast, really the purpose of this podcast, is for me to learn how to be present. Like right now, for instance, I'm driving by a school, and there's a guy with a stop sign, and he's a crosswalk. Crossing guard, that's what it is. So... He was helping somebody cross the street. And I need to be present with that. (laughs) That that is something that happens. And I was present with that. I don't feel any better. Maybe presence isn't what it's cracked up to be. Maybe after the Gluta... After the Buddha... The Gluta. Wow, that's how much I'm thinking about sugar and gluten. <laughs> he, he achieved enlightenment, a.k.a. he rose. The gluta. Great. Just great. I'm going to get so many letters now. Well, another Audi drove by. I'm a big fan of Audis. I don't know what it is. Yes, I do know what it is. I like the design. Uh, My grandparents used to drive an Audi, so there's a sentimental value there. And it just, the, the, uh, you know, the Audi, um, the insignia, not the insignia, the symbol, the four circles, it just looks cool to me. I don't know why it, yes, I do know why. Why do I keep saying I don't know why? The circles look cool to me. It just, it looks, it looks like the symbol of an advanced alien race in Star Trek. That's what it looks like to me. Just highly advanced and we we have no idea. These are the four circles that represent truth, justice, joy, and gluten. It's a symbol that says you should know what this is, but you don't. Audi. I, at one point, I remember I did learn what the four circles were. And I, I don't think it has anything. To, I don't think it has anything to do with the Olympics. It was something to do with. I don't know. Is it four people started it, or I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. I'll have to Google it. I will have to Google it and get report back to you on the next podcast of what I learned. Driving by that white picket fence I was talking to you about yesterday. But, you know, at this point, 
Is there a difference between me doing a podcast with, at best, five listeners and me having an imaginary friend? Is there really much of a difference between the two? And now I've just alienated the last five listeners. Now I am doing it for an imaginary friend. Now that is happening. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarms changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. A little bit of Richard III for you this morning. That was my thing back in the 20s. In my 20s, I was going to be, I wanted to be the next big Shakespearean actor. And man, has that, the thought, the thought of being in a Shakespeare play, of really doing it, of spending the five weeks rehearsing, um, really, boy, that used to be all I wanted. It's so funny. That used to be all I wanted. And now, eh, it feels like it's so much work. Yeah, I remember the last one I did, I had I wasn't memorized on the lines like I needed to be, and it was a struggle. And I just ah, uh, I still and you know, I still have nightmares that I'm that I had agreed to do a play and I'm late for re- either I'm late for rehearsal or I had agreed to do a play. This is the nightmare. I I had agreed to do a play. And I was supposed to come to the first rehearsal fully memorized because we had a short rehearsal time or something. And I was not at all fully memorized. And I'm like, oh my God, i got to memorize all these lines. And that... Uh, and even just describing it, I'm anxious right now. I don't know. It's I, I don't have the same kind of anxiety with the stand-up. I guess because I'm the one writing it, and then if in the moment something happens, well, Josh the writer decided to make some, decided to take some poetic license. Oh, I just saw somebody dump some water or something out of their car. They're driving a Civic. It's a newer Civic. I can tell because it looks meaner. Again, I will say this again. The Honda is not supposed to look mean. The Honda is supposed to look affable. Oh, and I think the car next to me is one of those Ford Aerostar vans. Do they start making those again? Oh, God, look at that van. That is a van. I like this van because I feel like a lot of modern vans, they try to make it look, they try to make the van look cool. And this van says, nope, I am a van. All of the jokes that you have about vans, I am the epitome of those jokes. Let's hear it. I'm not one of them streamlined vans. So you can pretend you're driving a sports car when you're taking the kids to soccer practice. No. I am a van. Oh no, it's not called the Aerostar. What is it? It's the... What is it? The True Quest? Please tell me that's the name of the car. Please tell me that is the name of the car. The True Quest? I can't be reading that right. I'm sure I'm not reading that right. But it looks like a Ford Aerostar. It pretty much is a Ford Aerostar. Ah, it's driving away now. Damn it. As opposed to a false quest? I'm sure I misread it. I'm, I'm sure I misread it. Even the name Aerostar is kind of a, a bit hysterical. 
if you'd never seen a Ford Aerostar before, or if you've never seen the van before, and you heard, take them to the Aerostar, it sounds like a ship in Battlestar Galactica. Just a massive ship with weapons. Maybe even one of them, you know, one of them anime ships that transforms into a giant samurai warrior. Aerostar, transform! And then you see the van, and you're like, oh boy. And again, I'm dr- this street I'm on, nobody uses the crosswalk. And I'll just run in the middle of the street. We are a civilization with laws, and we have those laws for a reason. Order must be maintained. Use the crosswalk. Driving by the NoHo Senior Arts Colony. See, on the one hand, there's a part of me that would like, oh, I'd like to end up there. But there's a second part of me that's like, oh, that's scary to end up there. Senior Arts Colony. I'm going to be recruited to do a play, and I won't be able to memorize anything. And then there's a third part of me that would like to go there now. I think they could all relate to my lack of gluten. I am going to be headed to uh, Denver next week. I have to fly, scared of flying, fear of flying. Oh, again. All right, so here's a Mazda SUV. It's called the Tribute. Boy, these names are just getting weirder and weirder. What's it a tribute to? The Ford Explorer? I, what? Tribute. In honor of, of Jim Anderson, a person we have known and loved for over 50 years, who was taken from us still too early. We have designed, in his honor, this sport utility vehicle. Because if it's one thing that Bob Anderson loved to do, It was try to go off-roading and then damage an axle because the SUV that he had really wasn't designed for the kind of off-roading that he was doing. And that is exactly what this SUV is. It's really a giant van. Mazda Tribute for Bob Anderson. I think Mazda, didn't there... Their song used to be, Mazda, it just feels right. Yeah, that was their commercial back in the day. Mazda, it just feels right. If that's all it is, there might be some problems. You're not, they're not lying, it just feels right. It's not necessarily a quality automobile. It may not actually get you anywhere. It just, all we're promising is that it feels right. How's the gas mileage? No idea, but it feels right. Mazda. Oh man, seeing these planes fly out of Burbank Airport. Fear of flying, fear of dying, causes crying, lots of sighing. 
How am I rhyming without really trying? Can that part of the podcast be stricken? Of course, uh, every single time I hit the same red light, I can't stand it. And I'm in the intersection now, and the guy trying to make a left turn is mad at me. not have done that. Should have waited. Ah, I don't know what it is, but this light today is really bothering me. Turn already. I've been fasting for 16 hours. I want to order a croissant. Yes, I know there's gluten in it. Leave me alone. Leave me alone, America. Leave me alone. These lights. These lights were made for changing. Why why am I singing? Stop singing. We're not going to turn this into an improvised musical podcast. What is happening now? Now I'm stuck in another middle. Why why are we not going? What's happening? Oh, cuz somebody's trying to parallel park on a busy intersection. Really? Now is not the time to parallel park. Now I'm passing the street sweeper. The streets are always swept here in Burbank. Sweeping away the pilot scripts that were rejected. Here in sunny Burbank, California. Burbank, California. Where your pilot script was rejected. That's another thing lately. I've, I've really wanted. I was writing screenplay after screenplay after screenplay for years, and I've just I've lost interest in it. I have so many first drafts. They're all like two hours of a, like one good idea and then a lot of characters talking a lot. I think really what I was doing with these screenplays was writing stand-up comedy routines before I realized it. That's the reality. That, my friends, is the reality. And what's sad is that I can't find anything else I enjoy anymore other than stand-up. I wish I could find something I enjoyed more. I mean, no offense against stand-up, but... God, man. It can be tough. Because if the audience doesn't laugh, it's not, it's not there. Ultimate power, writing something and saying, knowing it's perfect without having to get validation. If I had that, I would be a god. But maybe that's the importance, maybe that's the the beauty of it, is that it forces me to be in relationship with other people. And that at the end of the day, stand-up is a communal activity. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? I dare say it is, son. I dare say it is. All right. 
the question now, though, is how am I going to break my fast? How am I going to break my fast? Excellent question. I, I have to say, though, I do feel better. My stomach doesn't feel as upset. I don't feel as bloated. So I'm feeling overall a skosh better. But I'm drifting. My mind is wandering. What is it wandering to? Panic at flying. Panic at flying. Terror. Sheer terror. That is what I feel. Sheer, unadulterated terror. But I must. But I must. Go visit the kitties. Not actual cats. My cousin, my second cousins. I think they're my second cousins. That'll be good, hopefully. Go and look at them play with each other and go, all right, good, I'm part of the family. We will see. What we see, we will see. We will see what happens. Boy, I've just lost all sense of having a point. Totes, totally lost all sense of it. But we're going to keep on keeping on. That's what we're going to do. That is what is going to happen. All right, well... The Josh cast. It just feels right.